Hello everyone, I am very happy to offer you our next Sunday School lesson via this, via this format. Um, we're going to right, pick up right where we left off last time, if you remember last time we discussed the Golden Calf. Um, this time we're going to be picking up with the story of the Tabernacle. So we're going, in this lesson today, we're going to hear a lot about worshiping in God's house and coming together as a family of believers. Now, I know that this is not something that we can do right now, but this is something we we can take these lessons together and we can still be thinking and praying of each other, um, going through Bible studies as a family and things like that. So even though we can't physically be together, like our lesson talks about a lot today, we know that we are still together. We are still a family of believers. We can still encourage each other. So parents, any resources and materials um, should have been with the message if something's not working please feel free to let me or pastor know and we will make sure to get those to you also um if you have any questions that come up this is a bit of an interesting lesson um not something everyone is absolutely familiar with so if any questions come up uh kids have any questions let me know all right starting with our opening devotion matthew chapter 11 verse 28 come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest Now, some of you guys don't even have to imagine this, but imagine you are four years old, okay? Some of you that's a little older, some of you that's a little younger, and you're on a hike with your family. You have been walking all day in the hot sun. You feel like you can't take one more step. You are weary. You are tired. You turn to your parents, your mom or your dad, and you say, I'm so tired. I can't take another step. And your parent picks you up. And gives your legs a rest. Okay? Now, I want you to imagine something else. Pretend you are carrying a bag of books. Books are heavy. You're carrying a bag of books to donate to the church. And they are heavy. The books are burdening you down. Your steps are getting slower. And then your pastor comes along and says, let me help. I'll carry those books for you the rest of the way. That burden has been lifted from you. Sometimes we are weary and burdened, not from walking or from carrying heavy things, but from hard and difficult things in our lives. Sometimes sins bother us. Sometimes things in the world can be scary for us. Sometimes we may be tempted to sin rather than to obey God. Sometimes school can be hard. Sometimes we can't even go to school. Sometimes our friends can be mean. People get sick. People die. These things can wear us out and make us sad and frustrated. But Jesus tells us that when we are weary, when we are tired, when we are burdened, that we should go to him. God, Jesus wants us to pray to him, that he will listen and help us. He will give us rest and help us be joyful in our Christian lives. Sin makes life hard, but Jesus defeated sin when he died on the cross and came back to life. He can defeat our troubles too. Go to him and find rest. We pray. Dear Savior, you have saved me from all of my sins. Save me from the troubles that wear me out. Take care of me and give me rest from all the bad things in my life that make me sad. Help me to find joy and happiness in the blessings you give me. Amen. All right. I said we're picking up right where we left off. We know that God told Moses to go up on Mount Sinai. He gave him the Ten Commandments. While he was up there, God also told Moses some instructions for a place called the tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle was God's house. It was a place for the Israelites to worship. Remember, they were living in the desert. They were all living in tents. They didn't have a church building like we have to go to. So this was special instructions for a building called the tabernacle that the Israelites could, could build. Now, Moses told the people this. He told the people what they needed to build it. And the people were very glad to give these offerings. They gave gold. They gave silver. They gave cloth. They gave animal skins. They gave jewels. They actually gave more than was needed. The Israelites were so happy and grateful to be having a place like this. They gave even more than was needed. Okay. So I have a diagram here. This is going to show us what the tabernacle looked like. Okay. So we have this out area here. And that was all outside. It was called the courtyard. 
okay? And then inside here was going to be a big, beautiful tent with very, very ornamental and beautiful curtains. And we'll get into what these sections are. We're gonna start in the courtyard. In the courtyard was a offer, or an altar so the Israelites could sacrifice their burnt offerings. And there was also a basin, a big bowl with water in it for the priests to wash their hands. Before, before the priests would begin their duties, they would go to this basin and they would wash, okay? And then they would offer animals here. They would slaughter the animals and offer, put offerings to God on this altar, okay? Every morning and every evening, they would burn a lamb here. And it reminded them that a savior was coming, that there was going to be a price paid for their sins, that a savior was coming, that savior would die and take away their sins. But until that savior came, this is what they needed to do to remind themselves. So the animal offerings that they did every morning and every evening reminded them of the promised savior. Now you can stop and think, we don't need these animal offerings anymore because we know the savior already came. Jesus came, he died on the cross for us, he took away our sins. We don't need to sacrifice any animal offerings anymore because we can worship God without that, okay? Getting into the actual tabernacle section. This was a big, beautiful tent that had walls. The board of the walls were covered in gold. They had cloth across the ceiling and skins of animals on the tops and the sides to protect it from the wind and from the rain. Now, there was a curtain and inside the tabernacle were two rooms. There was the holy place right here and the most holy place, okay? So inside the tabernacle was the holy place and the most holy place, okay? Now, only the priests, which were like their pastors of the day, their leaders of the church, only the priests could enter the holy place, okay? And there were three main things in the holy place. There was... a golden candlestick with seven branches of light on it, okay? There was a gold table of bread that the priest would break new bread every once a week on it. And there was a altar of incense that every morning and every night the priest would go in and they would light incense on the altar. So those were all the things in the holy place and things for the priests to take care of. All of the other Israelites would be out in the courtyard. That was their place to worship. Now, the most holy place, not even the priests could go into the most holy place. The high priest or the leader of all the priests could go into the most holy place once per year. Okay. And once per year, he would go into the most holy place, which had one thing in it. It had the Ark of the Covenant, okay? Inside this was a jar of manna. If you guys remember, that was the bread that God gave them every morning to eat from. That was how God was feeding them in the desert. So it was a jar of that. There were the stone tablets that had the Ten Commandments on them that God had carved. And there was Aaron, who was the most high priest, um, who was the high priest, uh, his rod, his staff was in there. And this had a depiction of two angels on it. It was covered in gold. So once per year, the high priest could go in there and he would sprinkle blood on the altar from a sacrifice. Okay. We know the box was wooden at gold, all the things it had in it. Now, once they had built the tabernacle with all of these things in it, we know God was leading them through the desert as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Um, God came as a pillar of cloud and he would rest over the tabernacle. That's how they knew God was with them. God was dwelling with them. When the pillar of cloud would move, the Israelites would know it was time to pack up the tabernacle, pack up their tents and to keep moving. So that was how they knew they were to stay in a place for a while. When it would stop, they would first thing they would do is they would set up the tabernacle again because they knew that they needed a place to worship. They needed a place to give thanks, to give their offerings to God. Okay, and God was leading them to the promised land just as he had promised them. 
So whenever the people traveled, they would set up the tabernacle and they would worship there. Now, if you and your family were to ever move so far away that you couldn't come to our church anymore, what do you guys think would be a good thing to do? It would probably be a good thing for you guys to, if you had to move, to find a new church near your new home. Now, if you guys couldn't find a church, if there was no church near your home, you could worship God at home. You could do things like this, where you find church services online, or maybe even start a church in a new area. That's what our church has done here. There used to not be one of our Wells churches here, and we have started this church here. Okay? So we want to make sure that we are worshiping God. That is a very important part of our life. God has done so much for us. God has come. He sent his son to die on the cross for us to take away our sins. All of our sins that we commit, God came and took those away. We want to give thanks to him. We want to praise him. We want to go to him with our problems. We want to ask him things. Those are all things we can do in worship with him and things we should continue to do for him. So let's close with prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us a church in which we can worship you. Help us gladly hear your word as it is shared with us here. Please accept the worship and praise we give you with our songs, prayers, and offerings. We want to thank you for sending Jesus to save us. In his name we pray. Amen. Alrighty. Um, I have no worksheet for you guys this time, but if you look in your resources, you will see a list of all of these things if you guys want to go over them again. Um, feel free to go over them again. Otherwise, descriptions of all these, if you would like, are found uh, in Exodus chapters 25, 26, 27. We'll go through all of those things if uh, any of your parents want to look those up too. Right. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week.